Just because you're not on home ground doesn't mean you can be a jerk, be disrespectful, or lose your mind. Yeah, the rules might be invisible, but they are rules. There are things here that you must not do. Take in the lessons that I got for you. And you will blend yourself into this paradise. Listen up, listen up, listen up, listen up, listen up. To journey safe and be our pay respect. If you're not real for sure, they will detect. Your every weakness and then milk you dry for sure. Hey everyone, it's Mr. Teabag again here from sunny Dominican Republic. Thanks for tuning in. This time we're going to look into 40 plus things that you should avoid doing when you are visiting Dominican Republic or you're sticking around here for a while. Now the first one we're going to cover is don't look at the locals in an angry way. You've just come out of your maybe cold city or country, come to this warm tropical sunny place. Why not try to be happy? But with the locals, if you can't make it, at least fake it. Give them a smile. Don't look at them in an angry way. It's a ping pong thing. You look at them in an angry way, they're going to look at you in a very angry way and very suspiciously. So pay them a smile and just move on if you don't want to deal with them. Just don't be snobby. Maybe you know you're much wealthier than some of the people here. But don't show that in any kind of way. Don't show off. Because they are keeping an eye on everything from your shoes and up. Trust me on that one. The other thing is, don't be disrespectful. Probably one of the pinnacles of what Dominicans and Haitians down here like is when we are respectful towards them. And never leave on an uncertain or disrespectful note. Because they will remember. And if they can trip you up, they will. For being disrespectful. That's probably the biggest one out of them all. Now the next one is never play tough with the people or the police because here everybody sticks together. It's like a Dominican thing I haven't seen in any other country. Normally when there's a situation that breaks out in other countries everybody just scatters. Here it's quite the opposite. Their daily routines aren't always that interesting for some of them. So a little bit of drama is like a cockfight and they all hover to the situation. So if you're the one trying to play tough, soon you'll find yourself outnumbered. And when the police comes, if you play tough with them, well, they like the get the gringo thing. So you're probably going to be the one that's arrested. And then you'll find the lawyers and the judges usually side with the Dominicans as well. So there you go. Think about that one. Never get physical, even if you do get bullied a bit or harassed by somebody. That's where you just need to get on the phone and do get the police to the situation. And then you've got to argue for your case. Because if you get physical, they come in like 50, 100 at a time. And you may not look so pretty at the end of it. So it's best just to get the police involved in such situations and explain. I was just walking along and they wouldn't leave me alone or whatever it is and get the police to sort it out or take them away. You don't give people more than a split second look if you're not interested in hanging out with them, buying their products or getting their services because anything more than a split second to them is or oh, you're either interested or you may be weak enough that they could persuade you to buy whatever it is they're trying to sell. So just a quick shake of your finger, no gracias, and then move on or look the other way if you're in conversation with somebody and if they start coming towards the table, you say, hey, respecto. And then you continue your conversation, and then they normally back off. In places like Spain, they keep coming 25 times anyway. But here in Dominican Republic, if you take it to the point, hey, respecto, please respect, then they do back off usually. Don't expect the locals, when you come on your vacation, to speak English. This is a Spanish-speaking country, so if they had to be able to speak French, Chinese, German, Russian, etc., I mean, that would be hypocritical for us to expect that. So learn some Spanish or try your hardest to find an expat, a foreigner who lives here, 
who's often mastered to speak both Spanish and English and then they can help you out. Don't be too tight down here. Because it's not a welfare society, everybody looks after money a little bit more aggressively than in most other countries. So it's user pays with everything. If they have performed a good service for you, drop them a little bit of money. So even if it's 25 pesos or 50 pesos, if they pushed you to a gasoline station for one kilometer because you run out of petrol, I don't mind paying for that. In other countries I've lived in, they would never stop. They would just go past me and I have to push my darn motorbike to the gasoline station. So, hey, what's 25 pesos or 50 pesos to get pushed one or two kilometers? That's convenient, isn't it? Just because they are by nature a lot friendlier than most people around the world for a little bit of money. If you're in a restaurant and bar and the service was okay, because you can't expect brilliant service down here because none of them are trained in customer service. So give at least 25 pesos. If you're really happy, give 50 or 100 pesos. Be careful not to just have people sit down in a restaurant with you and expect you to fit the bill for everything they order. Plus, they may just want to get paid for their time at the end of it. So whenever you meet anybody, make it clear on every point that I will shout you a drink or a drink in a meal, but I'm not paying for your time. And then quite often the cat comes out of the bag right there. Well, you have to pay for my time. I don't work for free and da, 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 da. Okay, but then I'm not interested. Gracias, buenas tardes. And then they move on and uh, maybe they have a slightly bruised ego, but you haven't used their time, so why should you pay? So get clarification on their intentions up front or negotiate everything that you do up front. So there's no misunderstandings or dramas that come your way. Don't get yourself into troubles or big problems because you get too tight in negotiations, especially negotiations that went wrong because you didn't negotiate properly in the first place. So if there's a five or ten dollars debate going on, well, it could be about 700 pesos, but then calculate it back into dollars and then you'll realize, what am I doing here? It's not worth it. They want to bring other people into the situations, create a big drama, maybe even call the police. So you just have to quickly calculate, should I lose the battle and then win the war and get on with my day and stay out of troubles? Or is it worth fighting for? All right, before I carry on with the next important point, let's get some bonus tips thrown in from one of the local expats. One of the things is the Dominican uh, men are, what shall we say, always looking for a lady. And the um, foreign ladies, all of us ladies, are um, the people they're looking at. So the thing is you must be very careful and um, do not flirt with the, the local men because they take it too far and you could get yourself in a little bit more trouble than you want to be. A smile, okay fine, but don't go further than that girls because you get a lot more than you want. Maybe a one second smile and look away if they're not interested. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You do not want it because you will get it, girl. So, yeah, better be careful. Also, the other um, issue is um, dealing with um, purchasing anything. And um, one of the things you need to know, and uh, ladies, again, you will have the gentleman coming up and saying, oh, would you like a sandwich? How would you like one of these? And da -da -da -da. and uh, they'll say, give me a thousand pesos. I'll run off and get you a sandwich or a coffee. And they will never return. <laughs> so one of the things we learn in this country, male and female both, is that you do not pay up front. When you have it in your hands, is when you pay it. The other thing with bartering is you cut the price in half and then you start to barter. There we go. Thank you so much, Shelley. Always very cool comments from you. You're quite welcome. <laughs> and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone out there. Love to see you down here. Cheers. I would never suggest that you give money to street kids or beggars unless that beggar is heavily disabled or you can see they couldn't hold a normal job. So if there's a sincere part of you that feels sorry for that person oh my gosh this poor chap is missing a couple of arms yeah then if he's got a pocket put some coins in and, and give something but there's a lot of professional beggars and street kids running around holding the hand out rubbing their tummies I've even seen people throw 500 pesos 
You just cancel that kid's future. Why would he ever want to get a job or become a productive human being in life when he knows there's going to be enough silly people that will throw occasionally 500 pesos in his hand just for doing some little stunt, rubbing his tummy and holding the hand out. So give food or tell them to go back to their parents, especially at night. What are they doing out in the streets anyway? Don't think like you do in your home country when it comes to negotiating in general. Here they barter. So if you're keen to buy that picture frame or that ornament, well, expect they're going to start high. And you can look at it like dishonesty, but that's just the way they do it in a lot of the Latin world. So they may buy it for 300 and they say 1500 pesos to you. And then you have to say 500 to them. And then they go, no, 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 1500 good price. And then you say, okay, hasta la vista, amigo. And then they say, okay, okay, give me 1000 give me 1000 And then you go, tell you what, I'll give you 600 last price. No, no, 800 By Other times they go, how much you pay? How much you pay if you start walking away, you know? But everything's a, a barter. They don't see it as a dishonest thing, so don't look at it like that way because they all trade like that uh, and often there's no prices on stuff and that's a good indication here I have to barter to get the price down and unless it really hurts you won't really see what his rock bottom price is but you can always turn around if he goes no 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 way no way I buy this for for 500 pesos so how can I sell it to you for that price then you can always turn back and say, hey, I give you 700 because you really want that hat or whatever it is. And then you say, okay, give me, give me. And then deal made. But bartering is a normal thing, so don't get upset about it. It's just the way it's done here. Now the next one is don't expect fast and efficient customer service. They are at a completely different tempo down here than we are in regulated countries. So everything's you know tranquilo manana manana if we don't get around to it today we'll do it tomorrow uh, i don't know many of them that's been trained in time management and punctuality so to avoid getting frustrated and upset yourself it's better just to change your supplier so go through that experience if you find oh my gosh how do you get their attention here when you finally get their attention to say la cuenta por favor which means can I get the bill pay maybe give a, a smaller propina which is a tip than you otherwise would have had you been happy and then don't come back there again and when you find your favorite bars and you find your favorite hairdresser and you find your favorite petrol station and so on then life just becomes much smoother or your vacation even because you go to the spots where they just naturally have figured out how to do it a bit faster, smarter and friendlier. Don't be too trusting. Don't trust people in 2.5 seconds just because they seem charming and friendly. You really don't know a person, especially down here, till you've known them for quite some time. So if you say, oh, could you look after my drink while I go to the bathroom? It might get spiced. If you say, oh, could you take the scooter and run up to the store and get me some uh, hair shampoo? You may never see that person or the scooter again. And now you have to get involved in getting police to help you find the scooter. The rental guy wants to charge you money straight away, etc. So don't be so trusting. And folks, in case you haven't, click the subscribe button and make sure you tick the notification bell to make sure you get all my new releases. Now let's get back to the video. Don't come here and fall in love in 3.5 seconds with people who's come flocking into tourist areas to look for tourists like yourself. They're some of the most charming, most uh, romantic beings here on the island and they seem to come to all the coastal places and if you fall for their great theatre show, well then you may just get sucked in. They're some of the best actors and actresses you're going to meet in the world. And whenever I hear a man say to me, oh, this one's different. She wants to get off the street 
and get her own hairdressing salon. It's textbook. We've heard it so many times down here and it's just one more sucker falling for that trap. And they're also experts, a lot of them, at telling little white lies and make you feel sorry for them. They're very good at touching on all the emotional points that's going to massage and make you soft to manipulate you to let go of the money, which is the very reason they came to look for you in the first place. So don't come to these areas to fall in love. Maybe if you live down here for a while and then you happen to bump into a nice uh, worker from a law office or dentist office or whatever in town or you meet somebody in a professional place, a tennis club, a loving relationship can grow like anywhere else in the world. But like anywhere else in the world where there's tourist traps, these people are after money. That's all I have to say on that one. I think something that should be brought to people's attention, which is so obvious as to appear almost ordinary and not even worthy of mention, but it is, because sitting here at the bar, I see it quite regularly. A young gentleman will be sitting there enjoying himself, talking to different people, might even buy someone he considers a friend a drink. Maybe some guy from Vegas, they like gambling together. Some guy from Chicago, they like Michael Jordan together. No big deal. But now all of a sudden, he's got some Haitian beauty sitting beside him with her friend, and they start interacting, and everything is innocent, up until the point she says, would you buy me a drink? And he goes, of course. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't he? Buys her a beer and her friend a beer. And now the dynamic has changed considerably. An unwritten contract which is there on the table, which he's not aware of, being a gringo or new, has been, has been signed by him. And the contract says that unless he pulls out at some level soon or goes on, he's going to owe her some money. It starts right now. Maybe another beer. Uh, time spent at the bar and she's going to encourage him to taking him to her room or, or his room to sleep so it could it mount considerably so he's got to let her know right off the bat that this is over there with this drink but most gringos don't know that and they get wrapped further and further until all of a sudden you know four or five thousand paces has disappeared the next morning and think that was enjoyable but it didn't go the way I planned so just be very careful gentlemen and ladies that you don't buy uh, someone a drink unless you realize that there's a contract being signed that, that when you do that, when you do that thing, we're out of your generosity. I covered in another video one technique is you can say, well I don't know you, uh, but I tell you what, if you buy the first one, I'll get the second one. And then quite often they'll just uh, walk away. That's beautiful. Or they'll turn around. You feel funny saying no to a pretty girl when she asks for a drink, so yeah, you have to find a way before you go into it to get your way out of it, which is a good way there. I'm sure there's other ways too, maybe some of your viewers can contribute because the natural instinct to say of course dear well that of course dear is not the same as it is in other places in the world here in the Dominican and Saswa you can get into you could get into some trouble or some good trouble too depending on how you deal with it but be careful of that first drink boys and even if you do uh, turn a girl down because she she wants a drink and you don't want to give it to her give her a drink or buy her a drink she'll come up with a, a, a request for money for a moto possibly a taxi back to Puerto Plata or Cabarete. And you might offer her that just because of the guilt of not buying her the drink. But to that, just play poor, which sooner or later you're not gonna have to play poor because you will be poor if you keep dealing with these girls in a way which is not conducive to your wallet's health. Because there's so many females in the world that you can help. But help your mom, help your sisters, and help your daughters. But the girls, let some other guy help them in that respect. Gentlemen? But all this is just little uh, techniques they use yes it's called hustling hustling and, and a lot of guys it. don't click on to that until they've been uh, hustled out of a lot of money well, they're doing this to survive so they're as good at this as you are at your job you're coming down here for two weeks so I'm we're just giving you some tips in order to survive in a shark's nest is what it is and uh, don't expect to come away unscathed but these tips will help you help you survive and enjoy your stay because it's, it's part, all part of the adventure but remember you're dealing with experts some of the best in the world Caribbean girls, island girls, and in a situation like this trying to survive, you're seeing people out there uh, most devilishly inventive. So be prepared. Whoa. It's enjoyable. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Always good to have you on here. Enjoyable. Cheers. Thank you. Now the next one is aimed at you ladies. When you come down here, it's not in the Dominican culture to be topless on beaches. So just because it's okay in Norway or Finland or somewhere, overseas doesn't mean it's okay here and you could get yourself into trouble with the police 
by doing that. I mean, you don't go to Saudi Arabia and sit on a park bench and kiss somebody. You know what's going to happen. You get arrested. So this is why it's important you find out these things before you come down to a new culture, a new country. And you can still enjoy yourself with your bikini top on. You can still enjoy swimming in the clear water and stay safe. When you arrive here at the airport, they have very unfavorable exchange rates. So only exchange like 50 to $75, enough to get the taxi for you and your family or friends to get to the town where you're heading. And then in that town, you can find a good exchange rate by shopping around a little bit. Now the next one is if you want to park at the beach, be careful about that because if you just think, well, there's no official parking attendance here and you walk away, well, if somebody was yelling out for you, it actually happened to me. I parked the vehicle and I heard some boys yelling at me about parking. I ignored him, walked to the beach. When I came back, somebody had thrown themselves on the roof of the back and dented the whole roof in. It was just like, get that for not paying me my 25 or 50 pesos, whatever he was expecting. So either don't park near the beach and take a little bit longer walk to get there from somewhere safe or find an actual car park where it says 100 pesos and pay that or negotiate with the person what it's going to cost. If you can't agree, then it's best to move your scooter, move your, your car away from there because they will probably harm it. Now another very important thing is in the spots like by the beach where a lot of motor conchos and taxis and buses arrive with people it's like a little mafia there because the most aggressive of the people are the ones that's like conquered those little territories to be able to sell their services whether that be uh, excursions or other things so sometimes it's better just to say no thanks no thanks head into the beach and you meet some of the less aggressive people there or if you need to book a tour there's many little tour offices where you can go in and you can meet sometimes even the owner and sit down and discuss what tours they have and the prices without being hustled there's something called a motor concho over here which is a motorbike taxi and if you're taking these motor conchos negotiate before you swing your leg and jump on his seat he'll be very quick to say bang bang jump on jump on where you go where you go he wants to get to the other end so he can just ask any price he wants and he will chase you wherever he needs to chase you till you pay him that money so it's better to pre-negotiate that price and sometimes it's just a matter of say 50 pesos from a key to uh, el hotel see you know, and then he goes, no, 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 100 pesos or 200 pesos. And then you just say, no gracias then. When you start walking away, you go, okay, okay. And then you get it for 50. And most of them will try that little trick. So negotiate well up front. Now, let's say you want to have visitors come to your apartment or your hotel room. Well, just to be safe rather than sorry, before they arrive, lock up everything safely so they can't get tempted to take anything that you may have lying around while you're in the bathroom. And also, if you have a spare pair of pants with a wallet or something lying around, no, take it to the bathroom with you then. All right, there's no reason why you should leave anything for temptation. Here we have haves and have-nots, and the have-nots are always trying to get what the haves have, so be safe on that one. Gilbert, what could you tell us about getting the right price or finding out what the Dominicans pay? Well, if, you, if it is coming up to the right price, it's very simple to do. If you listen to Dominican or you can ask the Dominican how much they pay for it and the different um, um, services. Art, or services. And so um, they will tell you how much they will pay. Usually, uh, it's very simple to find out.
as long as you're not asking a person in that industry, so you don't ask the motor concha guy how no, much. No, you don't. You don't ask motor concha. You don't ask taxis. Just ask the normal Dominican around you, or just go to businesses where you see some foreigners working. They're going to tell you the right price. You know, usually long enough in the country to know it. Okay, like myself, I know the price of the Dominican Republic, so you can even ask me. What some of the tricks that, uh, like the taxi drivers, might try to pull on the gringos if they're not careful? Well, if they're not careful, let's say you're a little bit overweighted, what nobody usual is, <laughs> then uh, they try to uh, charge for double price because you take double C. But that's not real in this country. You would pay like everybody else the same prices. What's so the story if matter. somebody's got a suitcase? Somebody's got a suitcase, it's the same you should pay uh, one price for the suitcase and one price for you. So that's usually by the smaller cars, that's what they do, to charge you extra for that. Something I think is an old tourism country, you should not go around uh, like a Christmas tree with all your stuff around, because uh, that just um, pays too much attention to the poor people, and probably somebody's going just behind you and try to rip you off all the stuff you got with you. So you should not wear this like, like at home. So just be uh, sure when you're in a third world country, there are a lot of poor people around, so just behave like that. And they may also try to find out where they live, to they, store all this stuff. Exactly, they try to find that out and they will because they know each other well and so they're going to find that out and they're going to try to rope you there. So just go around as normal tourists with some less pro uh, stuff than possible. So if some of the locals get too curious and ask, oh where do you live, where are you staying? Well don't answer to that, don't give them any kind of directions, you're just here on holiday. So you don't need, need to give any directions at all. Mm -hmm. Well, if people hustle too much for money, it's, um, you know, they come all the time with the idea, oh, we are poor country, we are poor people, can you give me something? Why should you pay somebody for nothing? Why should you just give your money away? You've been working hard for it, so why should you just give it away? If you get a service for it, it's fine. If you don't, just say nice, no thank you, or no, sorry. And how do they look at you when you do get soft and you pay? What happens then? Well, then you will try all the time when you're passing by, you're going to try to send somebody else to go and try to rip you off too, and it's going to continue. This is a, a, a chain reaction, it's never will stop, it's cost you more money than you really want. So once you prove you're a sucker, you're always a sucker. That's the way it is. When you rent a vehicle, what would you recommend to people that they should do? Well, a lot of people think in uh, third world countries there are no rules and no regulations, you can you know, drive without a helmet and all that, and that's completely wrong. Because we have all the same laws uh, over our planet, wherever you go with rental cars or even car bikes, whatever you want. Uh, so you check out the internet, you're going to find the rules and the regulations. For example, driving without a helmet over here, it's getting really expensive when you stop here. Uh, if you rent a car, check out the car, take picture from them, the inside, outside, all little stretches on it. And uh, then check out if um, the taxes are paid, there's a little um, um, uh, sticker in the front of the window that is paid and check out your contract well because they try to rip you off if something's gone wrong with the engine or something like this like a few times I know some friends been ripped off like that so there are some other parts you should look for it's like you should have a fire extinguisher in the car you should have a body can um, or a medical first aid kit you should have in the car a little brush uh, a triangle. safety vest, the triangle, that's the five parts you should have in your cars, even on a rental car. If you don't have it, don't rent the car because you will charge for the car. If something's going to happen, you have to pay about 5,000 pesos. Each piece is missing. So be careful on that. In all tourist destinations, you have pickpocketers. So if the pants you're wearing are too loose and you just throw a little money clip with a whole stack of cash in there, Oh my gosh, are they good at getting them out. I had a German film crew come over here who were filming scams and they actually did it on purpose with secret cameras so they could just see how these people in the streets were operating. And if it was a man that met a couple of girls, one girl would give him a big hug and say Mia more, Mia more, and the other one would be fishing the money out of his pocket. So there's all sorts of tricks that go on in these kind of tourist spots. Be careful on that one. Have your money belt. If it's hard and difficult for you to get in there, it'll be difficult for them to get in there as well. All right, folks. Now let's talk a little bit about driving down here to keep you safe. Don't expect Dominicans 
or Haitians for that sake, to respect any kind of road rules. If you rent the scooter or rent the vehicle, driving down here is a whole lot different than driving in a regulated society where people respect road rules in general. Down here, they run red lights, they slam the brakes right in the middle of the road to talk to a good amigo, or if it's a taxi to get 25 pesos from somebody, they might be able to get into their taxi. You have to keep your eyes on the road 100% of the time. Because the split second you start looking at girls or start looking at some kind of scenery out there, boom, that's when the accident happens. So pay attention and try to preempt all stupidity, so to say, that could be done by other drivers out there. And then you have a good chance of staying out of accidents and staying safe. Now, the other thing when you're driving at night, don't drive in the right hand or right out by the roadside because there's a lot of pedestrians there who think they are walking reflectors, but they're not. You also get motorbikes with no rear light working. And sometimes there's three, four people on that motorbike. And if you just ram into them and they die, well, you'll be spending some time in jail or paying out tens of thousands of dollars to the families before you're ever going to get your passport back and go on a plane. Don't drive up against the center line on the road. Stay in the middle of your lane. Be ready to swerve either way because there's a lot of vehicles over here that do some crazy things and suddenly pull out from behind another vehicle even on double lines etc and they put your life at risk with a head-on collision so really keep an eye out for oncoming traffic who's trying to overtake and the other thing is potholes at certain times of the year here especially in the rain season and straight after the rain season a lot of potholes come about and people start swirling around these potholes and they'll suddenly jerk the steering wheel and head into your lane so you got to really keep your eyes on the road now another thing that I can speak from experience don't go too fast and build up areas because there's a lot of kids playing there and you also have animals like stray dogs that'll suddenly come belting across the road and if you're coming racing at 100 kilometers an hour and this dog just suddenly runs out well you could be in a really nasty accident and hit a truck coming the other way so slow down and build up areas or wherever you can't clearly see what's ahead of you there's also another problem over here with the farmers not enclosing their farm areas properly so their cattle are running out on the roads while visiting this country I've hit two cows and four dogs so I'm speaking from experience here and I've had to sell a wreck a vehicle because it was too crushed up after hitting a cow that suddenly just appeared on a very dark country road at night and that was not a very pleasant situation trust me so uh, what I learned from that is slow right down and have very good project the lights on the front. Now the next one is whenever you're out and about, whether it be in restaurants or bars, don't leave your wallet, your phone or any other valuables like keys just floating around on a bar top or on the table. Because as I said earlier, everything has legs here. And the moment you look away, somebody will sweep it up. Now, if you're out partying, make sure you don't get so drunk like in any other country that you can't orient yourself properly. Because over here, you're not on home ground. Everybody sees your weaknesses and your inability to function as an opportunity to get the better of you. And it's probably best if you do drink quite a bit to go home alone. Because otherwise you may collapse, fall over, stuff goes missing and then it's a big drama the next day where's my passport where's all my credit cards my cash and you don't want to be in that situation also establish very quickly a good taxi driver or motor concha driver that you can trust that will look after you even if you had quite a bit to drink to get you to where you want to go
and especially if you're a lady you want to secure that good trustworthy motor concha or taxi driver if you're just going to take anybody on the street then you want to make sure you get dropped off to another place close to your place so they think that you're staying there but once they've gone you run across the road to your hotel and that way you kind of keep it a little bit discreet where you're staying not to get robbed or any other nasty things if you're heading out to adventure in remote areas or down remote roads etc well either make sure you have some kind of defense weapons with you or have a tour guide that you know is trustworthy or go with a group of people because you don't want to put your safety at risk don't give your phone number out to anybody that you don't want a lot of text messages or calls from it's better that you say no 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 you give me your number I call you when I'm free I don't like a lot of people calling me so what's your number because over here one thing I've noticed is they are like 25 times more call it aggressive or proactive in texting and calling and it's all about the money as I said so if you are meeting new people get their numbers but be very very conservative in terms of who you give your number out to don't flash your money in public okay so maybe it makes you feel good that you've got a lot of dollars or you've changed into uh, thousands of pesos but over here if they see it they want it when they want it they come for it so it's better not to make yourself a target you don't need more than two three thousand pesos maximum when you're heading away from your hotel room I mean the prices of a meal over here is between 200 and a thousand pesos so if you have two to three thousand pesos on you well even if you were mugged it's not the end of your life but at least you didn't lose tens of thousands of pesos or hundreds of dollars don't feel sorry for everybody some yes but if you've ever been to places like Haiti there's people who haven't eaten for a week nobody's starving like that over here in Dominican Republic guarantee you but if they are genuinely in trouble and you can see some proof of it okay maybe help out all right and the next one is when you're out in a bar or a restaurant don't assume that all taxes and tips are included so look at the bottom of the menu and if you can't see it there then ask the waiter or waitress what the story is there so there won't be any surprises on your bill at the end when you're out dining be careful about cold side salads a lot of people who's had tummy problems down here it's because they're eating cold salads where they didn't wash them properly or with a drop of chlorine in the water to kill off any bacteria so everything fried or cooked really well you're normally safe don't drink the tap water it's okay the tap water to brush your teeth to have showers wash your face no problem stick to the bottled water for drinking and even if you're gonna cook some spaghetti etc in your hotel room that's fine I would suggest you not to run the air conditioning units because a lot of people get sick from it if you're in a vehicle roll the windows down and enjoy the breeze and if you're sleeping in a hotel room just make sure before you book that room that it has a good fan they call it abanico in Spanish so if you have a good fan and some windows that can be uh, open with mosquito screens you should be fine don't stay inside your resort for the entire vacation if you want to learn something you want some adventure you want to come back with some great memories get out there and explore the whole thing is just do it safely and if you don't know how to do that well contact me I have a consulting service for that but get out there and explore that's the main message also don't leave your passport with any companies any institutions that is your main document to travel in and out of the country it's better to give them a copy if you're in a bank and they want to see the original one that's fine but you better get it back nobody hangs on to your passport let's not be so judge judgmental 
by our own experience. And standards. We to, yes, we have to to remember at any moment we are actually foreigners here. I mean, we came, so if we want to really to, to live well with, with the local population, we should basically mix with them and kind of the meld into them. Right. And if anybody gets into any kind of problems, what would you recommend that they do? Uh, yeah, first, actually, uh, not only problems, any kind of the legal transactions, any kind of the transaction, any kind of the of the deals, uh, do it with a contract and with a lawyer. Uh, otherwise, the things can really get very complicated. If you don't have the legal support, if you don't have someone who can really tell you, like, no, who understands so the country? Yeah, of course. It's who knows the laws? Who knows everything? How it moves? If you get in any kind of the trouble, I speak from the personal experience, you can get in really in some bad moments without any fault of yours. Thank you. Now, if you come to Dominican Republic and you fall in love with it and you think, "I want to work here," well, think twice or get my consultancy on that one because. I can get into a lot of little avenues about business and working and the uh, stories that I've seen and heard down here. So it's better not to chase pesos and dollars down here. This is a country you come to with a good income coming in so you can enjoy all the good things here. Once you start focusing on trying to make a living here, it becomes very tough for most people. Now the other thing, if you're coming down here either short or long term to stay, don't rush in and hire a lot of help, like security guards, housemaids, uh, gardeners, and construction workers, electricians, and other tradespeople that you haven't got a clue of how ethical they are or how well they work. This is where I hire myself out as a consultant again, or get advice from expats that's lived here for a while, so at least you get good contacts. But the big point here is, you don't know the employment laws down here, and they do. And they are very quick, some of them, to take advantage. So you, maybe you just hired a part-time um, gardener. And the next thing you're being sued for unrightful dismissal, because now you didn't need him anymore. And then it's a million plus pesos. So be careful on that one. Be careful when it involves a fair bit of money or a lot of money not to just do handshake deals get everything in writing and get them to sign for it and if it's a lot of money make sure it's translated into Spanish to make it a real legal binding contract all right a lot of us foreigners we come down here and we got these rosy colored glasses on because everything seems so free there's not all these rules and regulations and the weather's nice the water's so beautiful the people seem friendly and we haven't got ourselves involved in a whole lot of different things yet that's when it starts getting tricky so my message is here don't get the big hummer to start with no get a little scooter don't get the long-term rental or rush into buying a villa do the small deals first Dominicans especially have a certain business style and you may as well get burnt on smaller negotiations than on the big ones. So if you're going to learn something because maybe you're not negotiating correctly with Dominicans, learn it with the small stuff. Also, don't expect that there's a lot of honor, both in personal interactions or in business. In these tourist areas, unfortunately, there's a high percentage of people who will lie, steal, cheat, let you down and manipulate to get your money or to get your stuff. So just keep that in mind that you have to inspect what you expect. Don't be quick to put deposits down on anything. It's like you bring it, then I give you the cash. Alright folks, thanks for watching to this point. There's a saying, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. And I do hope the information you received in this video is going to help you in the future when you travel down here or stay here. Also, keep in mind I run a relocation advisory service or consultancy 
for both traveling around the island here as well as if you want to relocate here and it's more about advice on how to handle yourself similar to what's in the video but tailor-made for your needs so you can turn up with a list of questions about how do we go about this that and the other thing as well as a list of the trades people that you will need in order to have good support when you start out down here all right folks to contact me simply send me an email to info at educatedtraveler.info and i'll be happy to send you my price plan and folks in case you haven't click the subscribe button and make sure you tick the notification bell to make sure you get all my new releases take care see you next time bye bye hartman because you took somebody now the next if it's just a matter of throwing a few a little a little bit a little bit La pasión que quieres a luz